how to use MATLAB to find equilibrium of a nonlinear partial differential equation. In particular, we will look at the nonlinear PDE, du by dt is u times two x derivatives of u and then forced by a one minus x term with u of naught equals u of one equals zero. Now the first thing to note is we're going to use almost exactly the same code that we've written for the simulation of unsteady solutions of this PDE. This is the great virtue of this approach. So here, for example, you can see the we're going to use the function that we wrote for time derivatives of the differential equation, and it's exactly the same function. We make no changes here whatsoever, so that saves us a lot of work. And the boundary conditions are the same, that u is zero at the two boundaries. We do not change that at all, and that saves a lot of work. So all we have to do is to change the main function. And the first thing to note is the start is exactly the same. Uh, we define some variables, the number of points of the discretization, define the x grid, then define an index of the interior points, exactly the same. And then we set an initial value, u0. Now the, there is a difference here that this u0 is an initial guess to what the shape of an equilibrium might look like. Whereas in the simulation, it was an initial condition to, um, to be evolved from. Here it's just a guess. Then comes the differences. To use the MATLAB F-solve to find an equilibrium, uh, we first wrap our time derivative routine around um, with a very simple function. So we define a function, fun, called fun, which is a function only of the interior variables u, doesn't depend upon time, and what it computes is just the time derivative of those interior variables u at any time, and since it's any time we use time zero. Okay, then we give f solve the name of that function, fun, and we give f solve an initial guess, which is u, the interior values of u naught. And then f solve goes away and computes whatever equilibrium it can find, returns that into u. So let's see that work. So let's run it, change the folder, there's the computed u, and here's the graph of what it's found. As a function of x, the u of x value looks like this. That's a deformed parabola, and it's no big surprise there. Um, now, this graph here that we drew, it's not, it's not a surface graph, it's just a line graph, we're just interested in u of x, so the graphics is simpler here. Uh, first thing to do is to wrap the interior values of u that we get from f solve with the two boundary values, which here happen to be 0, and then plot that vector u as a function of x. Label the axes, space x and the equilibrium u of x. And then for later inclusion into any reports, we print it as a, a postscript file to a file called equilheatnon.eps. And we use the print command with minus d epsc2 because this is one of the best commands in MATLAB for generating the graphics. Almost every other MATLAB way of generating an output of the graphic is inferior to this. So I'll just show you what it looks like. There is the result um, as a encapsulated postscript file which has now been converted to PDF. Okay and that's basically it. Use almost exactly the same code but instead of integrating with ODE15S, we just use fsolve via this wrapper function. And uh, now we can do more things. We can ask for more resolution by increasing the number of points, say 50 points. Save it and run. And we get almost exactly the same picture. 
All right, but one of the reasons for using f-solve rather than naively integrating forward in time is that we can also find unstable equilibria like this. And finding unstable equilibria is incredibly valuable in determining the structures of various solutions. So let's have a look at sine of 2 times pi times x. And seeing what solution f solve then finds. Run that, finds a solution, and now you see it finds a different solution. It looks like this. And the interesting thing about this solution is that it is unstable. You will never find this from integrating forward in time. Um, you might say, well, if it's unstable, maybe it's not a valid solution. Well, at this stage, you go back to the um, output produced by fsolve, and whenever you call fsolve, it'll produce a message. And here it says, equation solved. So fsolve thinks it solved the equations. It thinks that this is a valid solution. So that's good. Always check that message. Uh, you can look for other solutions by starting from other initial conditions such as sine of 3 pi x. Now let's try that and you see something even more kinky. Is that a valid solution? Yes. F solve thinks it's found one. So we can find both stable and unstable solutions and that's marvellous.